Now all that is cool, so let's play around with something more. Let's think about maybe colors. So we see up here we have our is, line, is online checkbox and our username, let's say. This is frog paddle 13 I guess. Um, so when we check this is online, we want frog paddle to show the username as green, and if he's offline, we want it to show as red. So we're going to go back over to our solution, we're going to go to our converters, and we're going to add a new class. And we're going to simply call this, uh, let's say, bool to brush converter. And we'll add that. And here is our class now. We want to make this public. And as always, implement the i value converter. Whoops, if I could spell. And we'll control period. And we'll implement the interface. Now, you'll notice last time, too, we didn't touch this convert back, and we will on the next example. But again, we're going to ignore it, and we're going to simply focus on here with the convert. Now, if you remember, our value is what we are going to be passing. So we're going to be passing a Boolean again. So we'll call this var, um, I guess what we can say is online. Uh, this, depending on how you're using converter, that may not be quite appropriate, but we'll simply do that for this case. And we'll cast it the object value as a bool. And now we'll get our is online. And if this is true, then we want to return our brushes, control period, we need to enter in our Windows media. And we'll do brushes and online, of course, will be green. Uh, if he is not online, then we will return brushes dot red. So what we're doing here is we're going to pass the boolean value of the is checked for the checkbox. We're going to cast it as a bool here, and if it is true, we'll return a green brush, and if it is false, we will return a red. So we'll just go back over here to our main window, and we'll go down here to our XAML, and of course we must not forget to go up to our resources. We want to add in our new converter. So we'll say converters, and bool to brush converter. And we'll give this a key, we'll say um, status to brush. Now you guys can develop your own naming conventions, I'm just kind of showing you possible ones we can use. Uh, in this case we'll say status to brush, so the online status will be converted to a brush. We want to go down here to our example 2, and we want to get the, we want to give a name to our checkbox here. So we'll call this online check. And again, we'll simply just get our label here. We'll get its foreground. We're going to bind it to the element name, our online check, the path of is checked. And again, let's break this down a bit. Tab it over. And we'll do another comma here tab over and we are now going to access the converter static resource and then we're going to do status to brush and you'll notice above now it'll immediately turn red because this is not checked so just to go over exactly what's going on here what we're doing is we're binding the foreground which seems weird we're binding the foreground property to a boolean value and normally this would become an issue but the difference is now is we are telling it to bind to this value however go to this converter and return this value so we're really binding to this right here we're just sending the above binding to this converter now lastly we want to go down here to our third example and this is where we're going to really understand converting back and forth rather than just two so what we're going to have here is our sign up when this is checked, signed up for newsletter, this text box will display the string yes or no, depending on the value of this checkbox. And if we change the value of this text box to a yes or no, 
then we will also change the value of the checkbox. So we're going to lastly go over here to our converter and we're going to create a final class here. And we're going to call this bool to string converter. And here we are. And of course, we're going to go through our process one more time. And now we are actually going to use both of these methods. But first, let's start with what we're familiar with. So we're going to be sending it a Boolean value and we want to return a string. So we're going to create our little variable here. We'll call this answer bool and we'll simply set it equal to our value as a Boolean. We're going to say if answer bool. Uh, if this is true, then we want to return a string of yes. And if this is not, then we want to return a string of no. Pretty simple. Now, however, if we change the text, how are we going to bring that to a bool? Well, we can do that here on our convert back. Uh, we'll create another variable here. We'll call it var. Um, we'll call this answer string. And we'll set this equal to a string value because this is going to be the text box now sending to the converter and then we're going to say if answer string and we're going to use the equals yes and we want to do a string comparison because we want to ignore any case differences so if it equals yes then we want to return true and else we simply want to return false because we don't necessarily care if they type anything else other than um, yes. If they type in no or if they type in gibberish, we'll just interpret that as a no. So of course now we want to go over here to our main window. want to hop down here to our XAML. And first we want to add our converter again as a resource. Now mind you, uh, you can do this all in the app XAML if you don't want to stuff all these converters into your window. Um, but for an example, I guess we'll just simply do this. We'll add in our bool to string. We'll give this a key of, let's say, um, yeah, we'll just say bool to string. Now let's see, we're going to have a little error here. So we're going to back up, go over here to build, and we'll build our solution real fast. And now Visual Studio is perfectly happy. So we're going to go down to our example three and we're going to give our checkbox now a name. So this is the newsletter. So we're going to say news check. And then we will then go down here to our text box. We will access its text property binding and we will get the element name of our news check here. We of course want the path of is checked. And then we want to do a converter static resource that we just created. And we want the bool to string. Let me break this down just a smidge. Now how the convert back is working is when we are converting to, obviously this is where it is going to get the binded value here. It's going to get the binded value um, for a string because this is setting the text box text. However, if we are converting back, it is going to do the opposite. It is going to set this news check here to whatever our current value is. It's a little confusing. Um, if you follow it along through the code, it can make better uh, sense. However, let's run our application and see if we broke anything. All right, so here is our application. We see here our is visible is still working. And now we have our is online. It is red right now because we are not. And when we check it, it will turn green. And now if we go over here to our newsletter, it currently says no. And if we check newsletter, it'll change the yes. If we uncheck, it'll change the no. Or if we have it checked 
and we simply change it to no here. Um, because I didn't change the update source trigger to property changed, I'll have to lose focus here. So I'll click that button. And now when I lose focus, it'll uncheck the checkbox as well. All right, guys. So I hope you got a basic idea of using the iValue converters. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you wanted me to cover anything more specifically on this video, leave them in the comments below. Um, or if you have suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below.